This is a very personal story, a story about very dear friends of mine, David and Siobhan Connery. And I have to say, it is a difficult story for me to tell. You see, Siobhan has MS, multiple sclerosis. She's only 33, but she's reached a stage where David can no longer look after her. She now needs 24-hour care. To his utter distress, David has found there is nowhere, nowhere at all for his wife, except a nursing home for old people. But David refuses to give up, to abandon Siobhan. As you'll see, David has high hopes to help his wife and others like her. I haven't seen Siobhan Connery since Christmas. She was at home then and, as always, was the bright, funny girl I've known for more than a decade. In January she moved and this is my first visit to her new place. Hello. Hello. A nursing home for old people. How are you, gorgeous woman? Good. How are you? Good. The unit's just been done up for Siobhan, and it is very. lovely, but the idea of my brave 33-year-old friend living here breaks my heart. The staff are brilliant. Hello. Yeah. Hello. There you go. Hi. This is David Conley, Siobhan's Hello. husband. Hello. Hi. Good. Siobhan has moved here because she has multiple sclerosis and now needs full-time care. It took four years of misdiagnosis before Siobhan was finally told in 1998 she had MS. I remember that one time when the barman wouldn't serve you because he thought you'd had too much to drink. Yeah. In the end. <laughs> he was an idiot. Yeah. <laughs> Multiple sclerosis is a disease of the nervous system. Doctors don't know what causes it, and there is no cure. It's affected every part of my life. It hasn't affected your brain, though, has it? A little bit. In what way? memory, but hasn't made me completely insane. You were completely insane before. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> In those early days, though they both accepted Siobhan was seriously ill, life was to be lived. MS wasn't going to dominate. Did you ever think twice about getting married no. after the diagnosis? No. No, I mean, our plan was always to get married. I think I proposed two weeks after she was diagnosed. Some people would walk away. Hmm. Not you? No. <laughs> no. This is nice. Yeah, it is nice, isn't it? For the past I've eight years, David has cared for his yeah. wife. That might have been the cruise that uh, the first night we patched. But the MS has so ravaged Siobhan, she now needs full-time care, care she can't get at home. Yeah. When you started to look for the alternatives, what did you find? Nothing. You know, I just thought you could pick up the phone and there'd be somewhere for her to go. Uh, somewhere nice and somewhere where she'd get the right care. Um, and there wasn't. It's remarkable that in 2006 in Australia, there is nowhere for young people who need nursing care apart from old people's homes. After much searching, David finally found Wesley Mission Cinnamon Village. In January, Siobhan moved out of her home to here. The weekend when you left your home with David, that must have been a tough, it was tough day. The hardest day my life. Very old people. Cinnamon Village is a great nursing home, but it's designed for the elderly, not 33-year-olds. You were saying, yeah, sure, they're lovely. You yep. haven't really yep. met any of these people before? No. I'm in a different generation. With respect to these lovely grandmothers, the Siobhan I know has no interest in paper mache. 
left leg's getting a bit lazy. Swimming has always been one of her passions, and thankfully Cinnamon Village provides physiotherapy. There just aren't any young faces. But much of the time, Siobhan fills her day watching TV. Just by her going out this front door, um, I mean, uh, it, was, it was awful. But I tell you what, um, it wasn't as bad as when I left her nursing home room for the first time. Um, I'll never uh, forget the look of fear in her eyes. And it was fear? Mm. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, yeah, she was just scared. You know, she was alone. What are you most scared of? Everything. So how do you live being scared all the time? How do you cope with that? Just got to. I thought we had a deal. I wouldn't make you cry if you didn't make me cry. <laughs> oh, sure. If we missed a the bite, then you know we missed the opportunity to to actually build this. David has always been a roll up your sleeves back, type of bloke, as are his mates. So when they learned there was nowhere appropriate for Siobhan, they formed Young Care, a foundation with one objective: to build nursing homes specifically for young people. On this side here will be sort of the first wing, so that's about four apartments there. Already, it's raised its first million and found its first block of land donated by Wesley Mission. If Siobhan was in this unit. Um, you could come through this as if it were your own house. Plans have been drawn up for an 18-bed home for young people and building starts in June. But still waiting on any government funding, the bureaucratic buck passing has been breathtaking. The federal government go, well, it's a state responsibility. And you speak to the state and they go, it's the health department responsibility. The health department go, it's a disability department responsibility. No one wants to own it. And to desert people when they need it most is appalling. Why don't we care? I don't know, but they don't make it easy, governments. I remember um, when I was looking to get extra help for Siobhan, they said to me, you have to write a letter basically saying that I, David Connery, as husband of Siobhan, am abandoning Siobhan. And that was the terminology they made me say. You know, as if the situation is difficult enough without having to make me say, I abandoned my wife. Can you believe that? There are 6,500 young people in aged care in Australia. Some, like 37-year-old Vicky Smith from Ballarat, injured in a car accident as a teenager, have been here more than half their short lives. Their only companions, the old and the infirm. Can you put your head down on your chest? That's right. And 40-year-old Kerry O'Brien, who, like Siobhan, has multiple sclerosis, will most likely outlive the friends she makes here in her Melbourne nursing home. Right. Would you like to have your loved one at 30, 35, put into an aged care facility, totally inappropriate care? Um, I wouldn't want to see that happen to my family. Mal Braff sure is no the newly appointed there, Federal Minister for Families, and in David's view, a politician who is finally listening. I guess the reality is that some of us have said in the past, well, not my responsibility, I can hide from it. No votes in it. I guess that's true. I mean, uh, people like David and Siobhan are not new. This has happened for decades, and um, governments haven't done anything. <laughs> have to. Uh, yeah. Thanks. David Conry won't be crippled by government inaction. He's ploughing on with the support of the community and friends like Bernard Fanning from rock group Powderfinger. These two have known each other since primary school. <laughs> When David isn't busy, when he's at home by himself, how is he coping, do you think? He's both really brave when he's by himself, but also a mess, like, like anyone. I think the, um, the couple of weeks after Chev went into care, probably the hardest of his life. He's afraid and so is Siobhan and anyone in that situation would be.
kind of thing that it's the same with your family. If you're apart from them, you don't stop loving them. That bond is, it's there permanently. And now that you guys are living apart, how are you coping with that? I hate it. It's very different. Not having someone beside you in bed. David, you were telling me the other day you haven't actually slept in your bed since Siobhan left. No, I haven't. Well, the couch is pretty comfy. It's new. <laughs> well, it was yeah. new. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That probably says everything, doesn't it? Probably, yeah. Come on. Where's Mummy? Where's Mum? Where's Mummy? It's hard to fathom the loneliness these two must feel when they're on their own. But Siobhan thought of it years ago and begged David to get on with his life. Mm. A life without her. Come, come on, say hello. She knew that she was getting sicker and she wanted me to have, you know, all the things that we had planned, you know, kids and um, whatever else. And, um, you know, that's, that's how gutsy she is. You know, she's saying, look, David, you know, I love you, but you should, you should leave me. You know, I just walked away. I never had that conversation. Mm. Mm. You walked away, but you stayed. <laughs> yeah, walked out of the room. <laughs> Strangers may only see Siobhan's disabilities, her shakiness and her wheelchair. But to her friends, inside this frail body is a fabulous, vibrant woman. It's a facial. <laughs> This 33-year-old gets a kick out of doing what other young people do. This is beautiful. more motivated to make a difference now. I mean, that's all I can do, make a difference for Siobhan in particular and it? others. It um, doesn't make it you know, any less sad, but I'm comfortable that I can't do any more for her. Well, I'll speak to you tomorrow, hey? Yeah. Okay. I have a good night. Yeah, we'll do. You too. Yep. Damn. See you now. Bye. Bye. Hello, I'm Tara Brown. Thanks for watching 60 Minutes Australia. Subscribe to our channel now for brand new stories and exclusive clips every week. And don't miss out on our extra minutes segments and full episodes of 60 Minutes on 9now.com.au and the 9now app.